Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald released a new trailer at Comic-Con with some interesting clues that connect the story even more deeply to the Harry Potter mythology, while still not skimping out on those beasts either. Because, you know, I'm sure some people watch these movies for old Klepto Duck and Leafhead. I know that's not their names, but it should be. I'm gonna break down this trailer frame by frame for all the interesting Easter eggs and details you might have missed, and spoiler warning in case any of my theories or predictions end up being right. And real quick before I begin, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace, but more details on that later. Okay, let's dive into this trailer, see what we can find. Revelio. I'm scared, Professor Dumbledore. Everyone. He's scared of something. Ridiculous. Okay, this opening section returns to BAM! Hogwarts. Back when Newt Scamander was just a student and Albus Dumbledore was just a mere professor. You're played by Jude Law. This whole class lesson is a callback to Professor Lupin's defense against a dark arts class in The Prisoner of Azkaban. Remember when he taught Harry and the others the ridiculous spell to deal with the Boggart, which shapeshifts into the Observer's greatest fear. Now, of course, Dumbledore wasn't the defense against the dark arts professor during this time. He taught Transfiguration. It was Galatia Merithot who taught the defense against the dark arts at this period. Just don't get too hung up on this. The Boggart is still a shapeshifter and a ridiculous is kind of a transfiguration charm, so this lesson could fit within Dumbledore's curriculum too. Or maybe he's just filling in for a day. Or Dumbledore's backstory could just be getting revised in a way that's important to the plot of the story. Maybe he was a DADA professor at some point, but he just kind of covered that up in his past. Either way, guys, Joe Rowling wrote the script for this movie. I don't think it's a huge mistake that we should get all up in arms about. Newt and Dumbledore's relationship is quite parallel to Harry and Lupin's. Notice this line. I'm scared, Professor Dumbledore. Harry says this same exact line to Lupin in Prisoner of Azkaban. I'm scared, Professor. Well, I'd consider you a fool if you weren't. We see the second part of the scene in the next section. Newt, you're up next. That's an unusual one. What Mr. Scamander fears above everything else is... Having to work in an office, sir. Go ahead, Newt. Ridiculous. Okay, the fact that Newt's greatest fear is a desk job is just perfectly suited for his adventurous, animal-loving spirit. But check out the girl behind him. Slytherin colors and patch? That is definitely a young Lita Lestrange, Newt's friend who later gets with his brother Theseus. Oof. And she's probably the character who does something that gets Newt kicked out of Hogwarts. And we'll probably see what that is in this movie. And notice her nervous expression. She's terrified. I think we're about to see that her greatest fear is something extremely dark, something she doesn't want the class knowing. Could be related to her family, which has been known to be associated with dark wizards. And if this student is someone important, I wouldn't be surprised if all these kids could be revealed as parents or grandparents of people we know. Like this dude in Gryffindor red and yellow? I don't know, could be Fleamont Potter. That's Harry's grandfather. Like notice how he has similar black hair as Harry and James do, though unless they change the ages of characters from the books as we currently know them, I'm not sure Fleamont and Newt would have been at Hogwarts around the same time. And one last interesting detail before I move on, notice the little sound effect that plays right before Newt casts a spell. Ridiculous. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely heard a growl there. Maybe this means that the image in his mind of something silly and non-threatening to transform the bar guard into is a beast of some kind. Something that would be the rest of the kids in the classroom greatest fear, but something that Newt loves. Let's move on. Magic blooms only in rare souls. Okay, as the trailer ticks into gear, we see some shots that we saw from the first trailer with Makusa or Tina Goldstein in front of this enchanted statue. Except now we see more of the clip and that the statue is moving part of her garment to the side. It's almost as if this statue is unveiling a hidden entrance on the other side of the base. Perhaps this is how one accesses the French Ministry of Magic. Kind of like how that London phone booth is the entry point for the British Ministry. We also see an over the shoulder shot of Claudia Kim's character, who is currently known only as the Maledictus. It's actually the name of a blood curse. For this woman, it causes her to gradually transform into an animal. Could be the snake woman who we see advertised on the sign for the circus. There's actually a theory out there that I'm very interested in that this character could eventually become Nagini, the same snake that Voldemort keeps as one of his horcruxes. That snake remains the one horcrux that we don't really know the backstory to, so I wouldn't be surprised if it gets revealed in this movie. So this all seems to be taking place at the Circus Arcanus. It's kind of a freak show where magical persons work disguising their abilities as mere entertainment. And over this, we hear the speech by Gellert Grindelwald, played by Johnny Depp, which we hear more of in the next clip. Skulk in shadows. A 
us the old ways. Serve us no longer. Okay, this section shows Credence Barebones, Ezra Miller, observing the poster for the circus, suggesting he's on the run and looking for a circus to run away with, a home for other people like him. And after that Deluminator shot from the first trailer, we see Grindelwald in captivity, most likely the jail of Macusa, since remember he got arrested in New York in the first movie. And he appears paralyzed in this awkward contortion, floating. This could be a similar spell that Voldemort used on Professor Burbage at the beginning of Deathly Hallows, which would be a little ironic, considering considering Burbage was murdered because she was a muggle studies teacher and she believed muggles and wizards were equal, the exact opposite of Grindelwald's views. And Grindelwald sounds terrifyingly convincing as he pronounces those views to his followers, which number by the hundreds. At his side is Vinda Rossier, another family that later became Death Eaters. Notice how she holds this circular object. Now at Comic-Con, a clip was shown of Grindelwald using the Elder Wand to activate some kind of skull. And yeah, looking at it now, it definitely seems like a glowing skull is what Razier is holding here. It's still not clear what the skull's function is, but a similar skull appears at the top of the screenplay cover page for this movie. And many are saying this could be the origin of the Death Eater symbol of the skull and the snake. Hmm, let's move on. I take it. You've heard the rumors. Grindelwald had a vision that he would rise to dominance over the wizarding world. So you're asking me to help hunt him down? Okay, we see characters in Paris, the main setting for this movie, including Maledictus and Queenie. And notice this black cloth that appears to blanket over the city block. This could actually be a creature from the Harry Potter world called the Lethifold, also known as a living shroud. It's a dangerous being that looks like a black cloth, half an inch thick, and it eats people. The only protection from it is a Patronus charm, one used to fend off Dementors. There's also this interesting shot of Grindelwald looking up through a translucent version of Credence's head, and notice how his odd eye is very pronounced here. There's a theory that others have speculated that this eye could be Mad-Eye Moody's eye, you know, the one that can rotate 360 degrees and allow him to see through anything. That sounds a lot of fun, I don't know if it's true, but there could be some kind of enchantment to this eye. Like maybe it allows him to see where the Deathly Hallows are, or maybe it allows him to just visualize someone where they are or to control them the way Grindelwald seems to be trying to do with Credence's destructive obscurus power. There's also a shot in what I last speculated could be the French Ministry with this character whose name is Melusine. Now it's not totally clear what those three cat-like beings are. A quick look at Pottermore suggests that they could be Neasles. Those are intelligent cat-like creatures. They also have blue eyes. Neasles have a knack for spotting shady characters which would make these very useful for an Auror. Kind of like canine dogs sniffing drugs. And three black cat similar creatures would be fitting for a witch given the cultural association between black cats and witchcraft and the number three which dates back to the three witches of Macbeth and we see how Newt gets atop St. Paul's Cathedral in London up there with Dumbledore. Dumbledore has left one of his gloves behind pointing up to him as a kind of port key which Newt grabs it transforms himself up there. Clever. Moving on. I can't move against Grindelwald. It has to be you. In your shoes, I'd probably refuse to. It's late. Good evening, Newt. Oh, come on. Okay, this section has the most interesting shot of this trailer. Dumbledore looks in this mirror, but that's not any mirror. That is the mirror of Erised, which we saw in the Philosopher's Stone. It was Sorcerer's Stone over here in the US. It shows us nothing more or less than the deepest and most desperate desires of our hearts. So for his deepest desire, Harry saw himself with his parents. Which, looking back, considering his parents are dead, does that make Harry suicidal? No, 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 it's not that dark. Now, in the book, Dumbledore tells Harry that he sees himself in the mirror with some nice socks. But now we know the truth of what Dumbledore sees when he looks in the mirror of Erised, at least when he's a younger man. He sees his old friend, Gellert Grindelwald. Now it has been applied that Dumbledore and Grindelwald not only admired each other as younger men, but that they shared a deeper romantic relationship. And now we get confirmation of that. This also gives us some new meaning to Dumbledore's dark warning to Harry in Philosopher's Stone. Men have wasted away in front of it, even gone mad. It does not do to dwell on dreams, Harry. Interesting. So that kind of suggests that Dumbledore's obsession, or at least his protection of Grindelwald, was something that ate away at him. 
And of course, it partly explains why Dumbledore says it can't be him who goes against Grindelwald. Probably because he can't bring himself to attack someone he cares so deeply for, or at least someone who might know his real vulnerabilities better than other enemies would. Now, there is a theory out there that the reason Dumbledore needs Newt in particular to go against Grindelwald is because it was Newt who disarmed Grindelwald at the end of the first Fantastic Beast movie, when he lassoed him with one of his creatures. So even though Grindelwald definitely still seems to possess the Elder Wand in this movie, if this theory is true, the wand wouldn't cast a killing curse against its true master, the way it couldn't cast a curse against Harry in Deathly Hallows. That could be interesting, still I think it's more likely that there is a deeper reason to Newt having to be the one, perhaps related to the nature of his character and his knowledge of magical beasts and where to find them. Perhaps a more subtle power that Grindelwald might overlook, once again he's done it before. On to the next clip. You underestimate your talents, Mr. Scamond. Your arrogance is a key to our victory. Okay, here we see more of those beasts you all tuned in for. Klepto Duck, who's really called a Niffler. He's a mischievous little jerk who steals and hoards valuables. And this shot of Newt riding a Kelpie, I'm pretty sure, which we now see is actually in this indoor area that fills with water. Perhaps it's rapidly filling up from a tank that spilt over in Newt's Mary Poppins suitcase. There's also a shot of a bunch of Aurors marching in what looks like a row of mausoleums in a cemetery. And I think that's Theseus Commander leading them, Newt's brother. Now we've seen other shots that look like they take place in cemeteries in past footage. And now I'm thinking that that big cavernous auditorium that Grindelwald speaks to his followers in could be a secret massive temple located underneath this graveyard. Moving on. Muggles are not lesser. Not disposable. Okay, this section includes an interesting cross-dissolve between Dumbledore and Grindelwald, so that briefly the two appear to be facing each other, again hinting at their past relationship, but also their destined clash. We also see Newt, Tina, and Lita Lestrange in that French ministry again. Now they lose themselves in this grid of rotating columns. Don't know what's going on here. Looks fun. And then there's this shot of blue flames in the shape of a dragon head as it lashes down at Jacob, and Tina tries to keep it back. Now, this could be fiend fire. That's the deadly, uncontrollable fire curse that Crab used on Harry, Ron, and Hermione in the Room of Requirement in Deathly Hallows, and then ended up dying in. Fiendfire was powerful enough to destroy the horcrux of Ravenclaw's diadem. Though in a movie, Harry stabs it with basculus venom for good measure. That fiendfire took the form of a snake. We also see this kind of shape-shifting fiendfire used by Voldemort in Order of the Phoenix. So the fact that these blue flames also take the shape of an animal makes me think that it's fiendfire. And actually, blue flames are even hotter than normal flames. So perhaps Grindelwald is using an even deadlier version of fiendfire here. And then Newt tries to calm this massive beast. Now that doesn't look anything like any beast in the records I could find. I thought maybe a chimera, since its tail looks kind of different from the rest of it, but those legs definitely don't look like goat legs. I'm thinking this is something new. Now, you can see Newt is holding something on the end of his wand to get this thing's attention. I just can't make out what it is. Really, the part I keep looking at are this thing's teeth. They're super sharp inner rows of teeth, but also four big tusks sticking up out. I don't know, the teeth and this thing's fur color, also the straps and chains around its neck. This just kind of reminds me of the look of the Monster Book of Monsters from Prisoner of Azkaban, but maybe I'm just seeing things. Moving not. You're too good, Newt. You never met a monster you couldn't love. Credence! Okay, here we finally hear Lita Lestrange say a line, and her words perfectly encapsulate Newt as a character. She uses his general love for all beasts as a critique that he doesn't have the nerve to take on a real monster, perhaps referring to Grindelwald. She could also be referring to Credence, whom we see in this section with another wizard, as the flat therein explodes and reassembles itself. Not sure what's going on here or who this guy is, but it's a very cool way to have a fight. And then we see Grindelwald's daring escape, which will probably occur early in the movie. Now this carriage is drawn by Thestrals, those are the mounts that you can only see if you've seen death. And in the last trailer, we saw Grindelwald contained in this carriage as a prisoner still. But now he's at the reins, blasting the sides of it and using lightning to strike down Aurors that are trying to pursue him. So either Grindelwald attacked the Aurors when he was inside the carriage with them, or he turned the tables on them in another way. Actually, kind of have a loose theory on that that I'll get to after this clip. Mr. Scamander. Do you think Dumbledore will mourn for you? 
Okay, so the footage here is a little confusing. We just saw Grindelwald sitting on the carriage, and we know that at some point he was inside of it restrained. So why now do we see him far away from the carriage? He's watching it with the Elder Wand in hand. Does this shot take place after he escapes and now he's watching the carriage crash and burn? Or is this someone else who's bringing the Elder Wand to Grindelwald? Kind of like R2-D2 alley-ooping Luke's lightsaber to him to help him escape. Here's a theory for you. Maybe the Grindelwald that the Aurors have in captivity could be an imposter. Someone pretending to be Grindelwald, but it's not really Grindelwald. Perhaps Vindorazi are drinking some glug glug poly juice. So then perhaps the real Grindelwald, the one with the Elder Wand, shows up to rescue his companion to freak out all these Aurors. Look, I know it sounds crazy, but it would present a nice mirror to the scene in Deathly Hallows. Remember when the Order used poly juice potion to transport Harry by a night flight. Let me know how wrong I am about this in the comments. And before the title, we see one final shot of Grindelwald with Binda in the background and that glowing skull and Grindelwald flinging a curse at Newton Theseus. And that brings us to the final clip. Are you a ghost? No, I'm alive, but I'm an alchemist and therefore immortal. Oh, Nicola Flamel. Jacob Kowalski. Oh, oh. You don't look a day over 375. Okay, this is the other big reveal of this trailer. Nicholas Flamel. He is the alchemist from Harry Potter lore who created the Philosopher's Stone. That was the MacGuffin from the first Harry Potter book and film. Flamel used the Philosopher's Stone to make him and his wife immortal, but immortality isn't what we expected. He's over 600 years old at this point and very, very brittle. So maybe instead of eternal life, it sounds like the Philosopher's Stone just prolongs death. But the fact that Flamel comes up in the story at all is very interesting. It sounds like the Philosopher's Stone and immortality have a role to play in Grindelwald's plot. We know the Deathly Hallows are very important to him, so perhaps this whole movie will just end up being a race to immortality. But here's a question I'll leave you guys with. Do you think Newt is the hero you're most excited to see in this movie, or would you rather just see Dumbledore take it over? Don't get me wrong, I love the character of Newt Scamander and the way Eddie Redmayne has played him. But let's be honest, that epic showdown between Dumbledore and Grindelwald is the real reason we're watching these movies. Comment down below with your thoughts or tweet me at EAVOS and follow New Rockstars on Twitter for updates on our videos. Okay, as I mentioned before, this video was brought to you by Squarespace. If you want to set up a super stylish website fast, you can make it with Squarespace. Whether it's to set up a business or showcase some of your creative work, or maybe post a collage of photos showing your most fantastic beasts and maps of where to find them. I'm just saying the wizarding world would really benefit from using this muggle created internet and their wonderful website services. Squarespace has eight new templates in 2018 and they look so nice. Best part is you don't have to know anything about coding or design, they just take care of all of that for you. Just go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash new rockstars to get 10% off your first purchase, or click on the link in the description below. And a reminder to like this video, share it around, subscribe to New Rockstars for breakdowns and analysis of all the stuff that you love, and all the big trailers are drop at Comic-Con this year. Thanks for watching, and mischief managed!